Treatment for patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia has changed dramatically over the last several years, with novel therapies now standard for all patients. In this Enclave Peer Exchange discussion, I am joined by an international panel of experts in the field of leukemia research. Today we will discuss modern approaches to the treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia and new data that will change the landscape of therapy in the very near future. I'm Dr. William Weirda, Professor and Medical Director and Section Chief for Chronic Lymphocytic Leukemia in the Department of Leukemia at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Today I'm joined by Jackie Barrientos, Associate Professor in the Division of Hematology and Medical Oncology at Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell in Lake Success, New York. Shoa Ma, Associate Professor in Medicine in Hematology and Oncology at the Feinberg School of Medicine at Northwestern University in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Stephen Opat, Professor and the Director of Clinical Hematology at Monash Health in Melbourne, Australia. And Dr. Carolyn Owen, Associate Professor at the University of Calgary in Calgary, Alberta. Thank you very much for joining us and let's begin. We're here at ASH 2019. Um, and there's a lot of new data. There's been a lot of new data over the last year uh, since ASH 2018. Uh, I think it's probably best to start with a discussion of, uh, for patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia who are um, about to start treatment, having a discussion about what are factors that we assess, what are prognostic factors that we would like to know for our patients. And let's start with uh, Carolyn, and if you could just give us an overview of what your must-have prognostic factors are and what are the things that you're thinking about when evaluating a patient for CFP? Absolutely. I think that uh, today we would all still agree that uh, patients should require treatment through symptoms meeting the IWCLL treatment requirements. There are still clinical trials looking at asymptomatic patients, but the patient would have to be symptomatic and requiring therapy. Um, and at that point, we want to assess uh, some important prognostic factors, including IGHB mutation status, which is routine in most centers now, in some places not yet, but I think that everybody recognizes the importance of that, as well as TB53 aberrancy, either through mutations or through deletion 17P. Um, comorbidities and fitness are very important in terms of different toxicities of treatment and choice, although interestingly with the advent of the novel therapies, where it's less important, this criteria I think based on age and fitness that we used to have such strict requirements for. Uh, really, if you've got the, the TP53 mutation status and IGHV, I think that gives you a lot more information than even age and comorbidities today. Is fitness more or less of an issue these days with our new targeted therapies? Yeah, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's less of an issue. I think there's more similarity in tolerability for the novel therapies across ages and across fitness levels. Obviously, there's certain comorbidities that are more or less important. We think about cardiac disease with the VTK inhibitors, but in general, I think it's much less important than in the era of chemoimmunotherapy when we really subclassified patients very differently for age, young versus old, was a very big difference in how we approach therapy. Any other features? Uh, we have some data now with targeted therapy frontline, BTK inhibitor-based um, therapy, uh, BCL2 inhibitor-based therapy. Uh, maybe talk, can you talk a little bit uh, for us about um, renal function and how that might be important in patients, particularly those who you're considering for BCL2 inhibitor-based therapy? Certainly. So there, there are a number of patient factors that are important when trying to select a, a frontline therapy for patients with CLL. We know that um, re renal impairment uh, is important if you're using drugs like venetoclax with a risk of uh, tumor lysis. Uh, renal impairment was also an important factor in selecting uh, chemoimmunotherapy, which is still important for uh, perhaps a, a small subset of, of patients with uh, patients with poor renal function doing ha having worse outcomes with fludarabine-based therapies. Um, so as, as well as uh, renal function, as Carolyn mentioned, there's uh, cardiac issues is important for BTK um, inhibitors. There's also, you've got to look at uh, other comorbidities, so older patients, the median age of, of presentation is over 70 years and these patients have competing causes of death and second cancers and undernutrition and all these are factors in determining uh, which, which therapy is most appropriate. So a, a curative strategy is probably not appropriate for someone who's 96 years old, whereas uh, if you're looking at a different strategy in someone in their 40s. 